I'm Mike Siriaco, and I'm bringing you everything you need to know about WeHo. Well, I'm Mike Siriaco, and I'm in the backseat of a cop car. Again. This month, West Hollywood celebrates St. Patrick's Day. We're here on the Sunset Strip at the Roxy in front of the second biggest joint I've seen all week. This year's Academy Awards will be held on February 9th, although it once again neglected to include accolades for many diverse characters and artists, both on camera and behind the lens. Tonight we're on the red carpet for the Queerty Awards, which honors LGBT representation in media and includes some very talented WeHoans. Let's dish with them now. The city of West Hollywood is getting the word out to vote in the March 2020 presidential primary election. Tonight we are here at the iconic Viper Room for the High End, where members of the SoCal cannabis community are hosting a showcase for some of WeHo's hottest young LGBT musicians. Let's go meet them now. The city of West Hollywood's Recreation Services Division hosted its annual Youth Halloween Carnival. It was the perfect place for little girls to dress up as Captain Marvel, while their fathers dress up as Captain Marvel. Today we're hitting up the Comedy Store, the premier comedy club of the Sunset Strip, to check out West Hollywood Brunch and meet the next generation of LGBT comedians. Through November, West Hollywood observed Transgender Awareness Month. So, in honor of this theme, we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge some amazing transgender people who have advanced positive trans visibility with our Salute to Trans Celebrities. We're here at the Ace Hotel in downtown Los Angeles on the red carpet for the Television Academy's Anatomy of an Episode. Tonight, J.J. Abrams is going to be moderating this panel, which dissects the Man on the Land episode of Transparent. So let's go land us some interviews. Now, I'm a big fan of this episode, Man on the Land. Yeah. Now, you got your freak on this. <laughs> so what do you yourself know about kink culture? Nothing. I knew nothing. Seriously. Seriously. Um, I actually met Jizzly, who plays Pony, who is my dom. Um, Jizz is an actual uh, genderqueer actor in the porn community. Mm -hmm. And I said, why are we getting like a real porn actor? And Jill said, because I know how nervous you're going to be, so I want someone there who knows what they're doing. So I'm with Jeffrey Tambor, the star of Transparent. And I just love how Transparent has started this discussion in mainstream America mm -hmm. of the trans community. Yeah. Now, uh, why does it resonate so strongly with you personally? I don't know, I was talking about that today. I think it's because I've always root for the outsider. And uh, I'm a huge foe of discrimination and hatred and prejudice. Why is it so important to bring that discussion to mainstream America? Um, are you trying to get me to say Trump is Hitler? Because I will. Oh, oh, I wasn't asking that, but I yeah, let's say it. <laughs> well, there are so many trans people who are fighting for their rights. And we're excited to make television from the perspective of being other. Did you watch CBS this morning to hear about the three year old transgender youth no. who knew? He was a boy at three. That's amazing. He told his parents, no, 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 I'm a boy and I don't want to wear these clothes at three. So there it is. And his parents listened. The city of West Hollywood is fully supportive of cannabis, but there is a proper time and place to consume it. And that time is now. And that place is right here at Lowell Cafe, the nation's first cannabis cafe right here in West Hollywood. So let's head inside and speak to one of their flower hosts about consuming cannabis. Come on. Now this is the first cannabis cafe in the nation. Why are we able to have this in West Hollywood but not in other places. West Hollywood is known to be one of the cannabis capitals of the country, so of course this would be the place where it'd be happening. As far as everything we offer, we have pre-rolls, flour, edibles, concentrates. We have bongs to hit, puffcos to use. It's pretty awesome. What are the rules here for consuming cannabis? So you basically just want to think about it as you were going to a regular bar. So just come, know your tolerance level, know what your responsibility is. It's a good time. So last question, say you were going to come in here, and you could only order one thing, what would it be? It would be the vegan nachos, hands down. Perfect for two people. It's a pretty hefty plate. It's also really good for both meat lovers and vegetarian lovers, guys. It is incredible. And quick reminder, just like alcohol, it's fun, but don't get behind the wheel of a car and drive while you're on it. Stay safe, WeHo. Today we're at the West Hollywood Library to speak with Andre Asiman, author of Call Me By Your Name the love story between 17-year-old Elio and 24-year-old Oliver, which has catapulted into pop culture this year with the release of its film adaptation, which is an Oscar nominee for Best Picture. Let's go chat with Andre and spill some peach tea.
I wanted to write a love story between two men where there was no inhibition except the ones that come from you. Mm-hmm. In other words, there is no police state, there are no blood, nobody, no, what do you call them? No, no, no uh, antagonists. No antagonists, right? no yeah. dangers. And all he experiences is the difficulty, the difficulty of saying to someone that you're attracted to, that you are in fact attracted to them. That is never, ever, been a simple thing. Now, unlike Ilio, you are completely straight, you got the kids and all. Yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, right. So what motivated you to write this incredibly sensual, homoerotic story? It came sort of accidentally. I was writing a book about a man and a woman. It was getting me a lot of trouble. I said, let's make it a man and a man. That's going to be exciting. I, you know, I'll explore this one. And I loved it. I loved every Me moment. too. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, it came out very true. Truer than the things that I was writing about. And it's as if so, there's a part of me in my head or in my soul that wanted to speak this language, this story. And so it just bubbled up. And in the space of three months, I had a whole book. I've never written that fast. Any form of sexual identity troubles me because it means that you're not open to the opposite happening. If you're entirely straight, does that mean you never might be attracted to another person of your same sex? Now, one of the more vivid scenes in both the book and the movie, the peach scene, where did that come from? I always give the same answer when people ask me that question, I don't know, (laughs) because I never tried. Look, I've tried many things in my life, that I never tried. The director said he tried it because he had to make sure it could work. And he said to Timothy Chalamet, he said, you know, that thing with the peach, it works. And Timothy answered back, yeah, I know, I tried it too. But Andre never did such a thing. You know, I might be tempted one day to do it, but I haven't. One last question for you before we go. Will you call me by your name? (laughs) Sure, Andre. (laughs) Mike. Thank you, Andre. You've been a peach. (laughs) Thanks.